Greetings, my great viewer. I'm so, so super excited. Today, as I, as I had promised, you joined by my papa's coach, your papa's coach, Gabriel Nyamo. He is a leader for the papa's first. He is a chief transformational officer in Quest Research and Consulting. He is also in Digital and Big Data Lead at Catalyst Associate. He is a board member at DLC Kogo, Kenya Chamber of Commerce and also a board member in several other schools and ministries. Why are they able to accept him as a leader? Why are they able to have him as a leader? It's because he discovered his purpose for helping many other people discover their purpose. And once you discover your purpose, you're able to live an abundant life, a fulfilled life, life just like God intended you to live. Thank you for joining us and thank you for viewing this video. As I've always told you, abundance is a natural state for you. You need to claim it, you need to live it, and it resists the rat race. Now I'll come you, Mr. Gabriel. We're really so happy to have you on board. Please go ahead and let us know what is this purpose? What is this discovering your talent? What is this creativity? Did God really put it in us? Let us know, and we'll be so happy. Thank you. All right, thank you, thank you. Mother, and pleasure having you. Thank you for having me as well. I love your focus around the abundance first lane, helping people being able to live life that is fulfilling. And I think that's also something that is close to my heart a bit as well. So thank you. I've introduced myself. I'm a purpose coach. And uh, thank you, viewers, for tuning in to this channel. Um, I'll be walking you through a short script, a um, few slides around leveraging your purpose for growth and impact. Uh, and I'll just uh, start by giving you a perspective. Anything that does not grow is not living. I think anything that is living should grow. And I've worked in my life with the people who have complained about growth stagnation. Uh, they are complaining about their jobs, complaining about their businesses. They are not getting fulfilled. And that's when I discovered that the missing link in all these is lack of purpose. I started my career in the banking space more than 17 years ago, and I interacted with people when I was posted in a human resource department. And uh, two years into the, my work experience, the bank rate of almost 100 plus employees. And I happened to interact with the most of those who are living. And I was very young. I was only two years into the organization. And talking to people who had worked for more than 20 years, 25 years, even to 30 years, is when I discovered majority of them, over 90% of them were not fulfilled. Yet they had achieved all what you can say humanly, that is an extra success. This to do with they were living in the best estate in, uh, in town, they were driving the best cars, their children were studying abroad, they were already in estates and they were, you know, most of them were rad lords. I mean, and there were no deaths. But when you talk to them, they could feel there are some sense of emptiness within them. I think there's one person who told me, who had sat for 27 years, who told me, Gabriel, I feel I'm going home empty. And I started looking for what is this void that is making people feel empty as much as we see like they are succeeding. That's when I started my journey to discover my papa. It was back in 2007. And to date, I founded Papa's Verse, which is an ecosystem platform where we help people with the tools and skills to be able to discover their purpose, but also to apply that purpose, one, in their career, in their relationships, in their businesses. And I'll be walking you through some few things that you can use yourself uh, to discover your purpose. So I want to just give you a quick outlook of how the world is currently. Then I'll also walk you through a little bit of purpose concept in context in terms of why purpose. Then I'll walk you through your personal redemptive purpose map. And then finally, some few pointers that can help you discover your purpose as an individual. I hope that this will be impactful for you, be transformational uh, in your life. Now, um, I always start by telling people um, you change because of two things, either when your mind is transformed or also when your heart is broken. Sometimes you go through rough patches in life and your heart is broken and you make resolves or you make tough decisions, or when your mind is illuminated, meaning it is enlightened. That's why the Bible tells us we be renewed by the transformation of our mind. And I think that's the most sustainable. When the mind is transformed, everything else also is transformed. And you live life 
that are as abundant as mother have introduced. Now, yes. I'll start by saying one of the convictions I have that is every human being has a purpose that should be impact people on the planet, meaning that you are not just born to pass through life and just add life and retire. The people who are just there to go to school, get married, get a job, finally, you know, they, they buy things in terms of wealth creation, and then they die. I think that's not enough. So there's a unique need that you are born and you came to the universe to fulfill. And you impact two phases. Either you're impacting people, that is your fellow human being, or you are impacting the planet. That means without you, there'll be a gap in the market. There'll be a gap in people. There'll be a gap in uh, also in the planet. Now, when I do a bit of research, because I'm also a data scientist and I love evidence and I love facts. Um, 2021, we were still at the heart of COVID. There were 1.5 billion searches on Google, search engine, people asking how mm. to find my life purpose. I think mother that is worrying because people are not searching. People are not searching where to buy a product. They are not searching where to mm. get a job. At the heart of COVID, when our comfort zone was threatened and people thought and kind of discovered that even the job itself is not mm. actually your lifeline, your business is not your lifeline, it can be closed down like the, the government closed down. At mm -hmm. that heart of desperation, the humanity mm -hmm. started searching for meaning. That shows you that naturally, and there's a craving within every human being to do mm -hmm. something that is transcendent, that is higher than just the things that we do as careers, business, and all that. And that's why the purpose becomes a very critical component for our discussion today. And I'm sure most of the viewers that are listening or that are watching this, you must be probably one of the people who are looking for this or searching for this online at the heart of COVID. Mm -hmm. But then something that shocks me every time, 87% of the entire workforce are usually unhappy. That's research by an organization called Garap News. And they always do this research for the last more than two decades. 87%. That is almost saying that nine out of 10, if you sample people who are working, nine out of 10, they are unhappy and disengaged. That means they hate what they do, generally. That's what you're saying. That's sad. Now, in addition, very sad. In addition, 60% of the current institutional rally, people are going to do their third MBA, second PhD, fourth degree, the institutional learning that is happening in the university and colleges, 60% of it is for jobs that do not exist. That means people mm -hmm. are left with disparation. And that's why you find people who are overqualified, but they have no jobs. They are not engaged because the skill match between mm -hmm. what they study and what they are supposed to come and practice is completely not compatible. Now, we also have the new age of AI, artificial intelligence that is mm -hmm. depressing human. Now, we are told that the future of the work the AI will kind of take over. They started doing this because of the robotics. Question is, if the job you are doing, the AI can come and do, what shall mm -hmm. the human being be left to do? I can almost give one guarantee. The only thing that a robot can never do is actually to fulfill a human purpose. A robot will sure. never do that. Sure. So that's why we need to hide. If you, there's nothing like job security. I tell people in career coaching, there's nothing like job security in this world. No job is secure. No business has that, you know, uh, galvanize you know eternity it can be disrupted but as long as it is anchored on purpose it will be salvaged mm -hmm. and it will be um, kind of sustained throughout your life so mm -hmm. even businesses are moving from profit to purpose we discovered we don't have to chase money chase money and i think this is something that you emphasize in abundance reign that yes. you mean it's not about money don't chase money yes. pursue purpose become redemptive and we thought resources and providence will actually follow you automatically. Now, mm -hmm. over 40% of people are considering leaving their current employment. This was done by Microsoft to act That's shocking. That means people are on the move. They're appearing happy every day, yes, but they're actually looking out for the next opportunity. That means they are not stable. They are not settled. And it's because there's something that they are hunting for or they are looking for. In life, you are likely to go through 60 main kind of transitions from the time you started learning how to crawl, how to mm -hmm. walk, how to feed yourself, all those, we call them transitions. You're likely to go through 60 transitions on minimum in your lifetime. Meaning that life is translationary transformational. That means you keep on transiting. Question is one, 
you are transforming to become what? So as you go through these 60 transitions in life, are you conscious on what you're becoming and who you're becoming? Because that actually is a journey of purpose as you're going to see in a few. But let me tell you why people have a dilemma of purpose. Why people have a problem in discovering their purpose is because we have been patterned to pursue things using what you call the natural human drives. And there are five of them. Sometimes there are six. The human drives, drive to acquire. Like a drive to acquire a property, for example. You want to acquire a title. You be called a doctor. Not because of a purpose. You just want to acquire something. Acquire a title, wealth, riches, all those things. Even uh, politicians want to acquire a status. You be called a honorable meshimiwa. You know, that's an acquisition drive. Sometimes the drive to acquire, you want to be called a graduate, you want to be called a doctor, a professor, not because mm -hmm. of purpose, but just because to acquire mm -hmm. a title. That is one of the drive that this kind of disrupt people not to pursue purpose because you have that mm -hmm. urge to acquire something. Number two is a drive to board. People want associations. We are human beings, we are social beings, therefore you want to relate. God has put in us a connection that we need to relate with each other. Now, because of that, there's a drive to board. And there are people actually who even pursue careers just because they are afraid they are doing it, because they want to board, they want to form a club or an association. And that mm -hmm. it's not because of a purpose, but because of the pressure, just wanting to connect, which is natural for every human being. The other thing is drive to learn. By default, if you are not called human being, we could have been called human learning. Because a human being is a learning being. You keep learning every day. As you watch this video, you learn something. Now, sure. that drive for learn can make you go and study and study and do many things, not because you're pursuing purpose again, but because mm -hmm. you want to learn. And it's natural. There's a vacuum for you to learn. It's like mm -hmm. eating. You have to have hunger, and therefore you need to look for food. But mm -hmm. the choice of the food you're looking for is what matters. Otherwise, if you just obey the natural drive to eat, then you end up just eating even things that are junk, that are not helpful. The same case with learning. Your brain can learn anything. Question is, is what you are learning tied to helping you become what you're supposed to become in terms of purpose? Mm -hmm. uh, mother, if I knew when I was young, I wish I discovered my purpose first before pursuing mm -hmm. my, post my studies in terms of my degree, my professional studies that I've done, because I will mm -hmm. have made light investments. Sometimes you come mm -hmm. to learn this way too late when you have already spent a lot of money and time. The other drive is a drive to defend yourself. I have seen people making choices because they want to fed, defend their family status. Because you are poor, you say, I want to get a job so that I bring my family out of poverty. What you're trying to do there, you are obeying the drive to defend. Now, that defend, that defend drive is usually very unconscious. You may not know that is actually what is driving you. But if you challenge why you are doing what you're doing, you may discover you're doing what you're doing because you want to defend your position, that you are not poor. Therefore, you want to defend that. Case. So there's a natural yeah. defense in every human being. And that can also disrupt you from focusing on your purpose. Finally, is a drive to feel. You have all the rights to feel. And they have, because you have emotions, that those are emotional assets. Mm -hmm. The question is, is that feeling under control such that then it does not direct you to doing or making choices that are not mm -hmm. in line with your in your with your uh, with your purpose there are people who resign from jobs because they feel unappreciated question is mm -hmm. you should leave a job not because you're feeling appreciated or whatever else you should be leaving mm -hmm. a job to pursue your purpose or kind of scale your purpose engagement higher so mm -hmm. whether whether you feel happy or not i mean that's not a big issue because maybe god is qualifying you where you are if mm -hmm. god wants to qualify you for, to be an encourager You'll make sure you're in a job where there is no encouragement. If God <laughs> wants to kind of train you on hope, to become a hope anchor, he will put you in positions where there is hopelessness. So quitting that environment, actually, you're not helping yourself because you need to ask yourself, why has God allowed me to be in that situation? Maybe mm -hmm. because he wants you to learn and transform, mm -hmm. then become that vessel that he will use to dispense his purpose. Now, if you don't have purpose, all these human drives are all futile. They are all vanity. Oh. They have to be validated by purpose. I don't mean that you ignore them. They're, they are very important as a human being, but this is where we get human being disrupted and they don't focus mm -hmm. on purpose. Now, we can classify these six drives into three drives. And then mm -hmm. these drives is the drive for having, the drive for doing, and the drive mm -hmm. for being. Now, Mother, I want to ask our viewers here, why are mm -hmm. we called human beings? 
Why mm. were we not called human having or human doing? We were never mm. called so. And this is something that nobody taught us when we were young. Yeah. Nobody told us why we are called human being. We, we mm. understand the human side because that's humans. We came from the soil, you know, the ground. That's humans, the human. Mm. But nobody tell us why that word being is there, the human being. Now, the mm. being is more important than what you do and than what you have in. Now, the having is the desire to acquire things. The doing is the execution. Like when you get a job, you focus on the job description. You have a job description and an appraisal. You do that religiously. That is a doing thing. And most people have been shaped by what they do. I have met people who have sat for more than 20 years in the corporate space. And I ask them, introduce yourself. Then instead of telling me who they are, they tell me what they do. You tell me, I'm an auditor, I do auditing. That is not you. I'm an accountant. I am a marketer, mm -hmm. I do marketing. That is not you, that's what you do. Now that's where we have a problem. So mm -hmm. we have never been told to kind of know who mm -hmm. we are in terms of being, the power of becoming. Now, I want mm -hmm. to say this, that being is actually your purpose. And I know this is mm -hmm. where most people get confused because the being now is actually aligned to the assignment God wants you to fulfill or not. And I'll tell you this, if mm -hmm. You, are, if your purpose is encouraging people, mm -hmm. your being is being an encourager. You mm -hmm. become the encouragement. Mm -hmm. So being the encouragement to yourself is your purpose. But mm -hmm. being the encouragement, organizing a forum like this and talking to people to encourage, that's a doing thing. But you cannot mm -hmm. do if you have not become. So you become encouragement mm -hmm. first, then mm -hmm. you can encourage, which is the doing. And this mm -hmm. is why I tell people, uh, Professor Wagari Mathai, mm -hmm. she never brought trees and vegetation in Kenya, in Africa. Mm -hmm. She became the green. She became green. Wow. She became wow. that green belt. Mm -hmm. She did not do it. She became it. Nelson Mandela never brought liberation in South Africa. He became mm -hmm. the liberation. That's why he could stay for 28 years in prison. He wow. became, so the, you cannot separate between liberation and Nelson mm -hmm. Mandela. It's the same thing. And for mm -hmm. those who are believers like myself and yourself, Jesus mm -hmm. Christ never brought salvation. He never came mm -hmm. to bring salvation on earth. Mm -hmm. That's shocking for any believer. He became the oh. salvation. He says, I mm -hmm. am the way. Mm -hmm. And if you understand this, you have hacked it. Purpose is not something you do. It is actually what mm -hmm. you become. So Jesus Christ, there is no way in the Bible he says, I have brought. He actually said, I am the way. And the mm -hmm. truth. So he never mm -hmm. brought, he could have said, I have brought for you the truth, or I am doing the mm -hmm. truth. Nothing like that. That's how we do our job description. So when people are like, now I'm setting, uh, people are setting new, uh, what you call personal goals for the year and all that. Mm -hmm. Many people mm -hmm. set goals on the doing, the doing. I want to finish a master's. I want to, those are doing things. Mm -hmm. But if you ask people, what is, are you becoming? You'll find very few people have actually goals that are aligned to the becoming, yet you are a human being. Myself, my purpose is more of transforming people's mindset for generational impact. But you know, who am mm -hmm. I? I have to be a fountain of wisdom. And that's what I have to become. <laughs> because I cannot mm -hmm. give you what I don't have. So if I don't become the fountain of wisdom, if I can't speak when I speak to provide wisdom, I can't mm -hmm. say I've succeeded in my life. So the reason why I do purpose coaching is because first of all, I have become that fountain of wisdom that then I can dispense it through coaching or through training or through consultancy. Now, that's wow. the difference between the doing. So you may find me doing, but that's not me. That's what I'm doing. The me is becoming that fountain of wisdom. If wisdom. your call is to, is to give people hope, you become the hope first. Then from there, you can dispense it. If you're supposed to give people energy, become the energy first. So mm -hmm. that even if you're doing nothing, people literally mm -hmm. can tap that energy from you. Wow. So like now in the upper dance lane, you become that upper dance lane yourself. That's the thing. Yes. Because that's the thing. Yes. Then after yes. becoming it, then you can do it and you can have it. You know, that's the focus. Apparently, wow. the world has shifted us from focusing on this. And nobody has ever told us when you were young, and even when you were mm -hmm. going through our career journey, and therefore, mm -hmm. we've made all life like a gabo, like a trial and error. We are going to talk True. about this as we continue. Now, that means we need to answer very critical questions here. Wow. Where did we come from? Why mm -hmm. was I born? What type 
am I here on now and space time to do? What do I owe creation? Mother, all of us have something you call a papa's debt. The debt mm -hmm. you have to pay. As the governments are paying debts for World Bank and for China and other uh, Western mm -hmm. world debts, there's mm -hmm. one debt that every human being has, and that is a papa's debt. Yes. And you have to pay this. And that's why if you want to understand the seriousness of this, talk mm -hmm. to people when they are almost going to their death bed. You'll mm -hmm. find that at that point, they are not looking for the next plot to buy. They are not looking mm -hmm. for the best sure. car to buy. Talk to people who are yes. 70s, 80 years, or when you're in the death bed. They will not mm -hmm. talk about that. They are more indebted on what they were supposed to achieve when they mm -hmm. were here in terms of impacting planet and mm -hmm. other people. And that's a purpose. Okay. Debt. Now, that purpose debt, of course, is redemptive. Now, let me talk about something before the mystery of design. Mm -hmm. um, Ephesians 2.10 it says that we are God's masterpiece. Now, what is a masterpiece? A masterpiece is a grand design. Have you ever mm -hmm. gone and see something that some an artist who have done something, a very nice artistic uh, creation? And, and that's mm -hmm. where creativity comes because God is mm -hmm. the author of creativity. He's actually mm -hmm. saying we are God's masterpiece. Now, masterpiece mm -hmm. is an artwork, it's an art piece or a product mm -hmm. of a design that is so mm -hmm. fear free and wonder free made. And that's the scripture mm -hmm. again. Now, mm -hmm. we have been created in Christ, which is our fabric, mm -hmm. so that we do good things. What are those good things? Those are mm -hmm. purpose. That's purpose. That he had mm -hmm. planned for us long time ago, even before mm -hmm. the time. That means we have to understand what you call principles and the power of design and creation. We need to understand mm -hmm. transcendent nature. Mother, you, even if you die, there's something that lives to you due. Mm -hmm. That's your purpose because your purpose is transcending. We still experience liberation from uh, Nelson Madera long after he has gone. True. Wangare Matai, we still experience and enjoy he, her, her, her fight for, you know, uh, uh, vegetation and forestation and all that long after she has died. So, yes. we, and that we can only understand this when you understand eternity because eternity True. is where God. God lives in eternity. God doesn't live in time. Mm -hmm. Time has allowed man to live on time. Human mm -hmm. beings live on time, but God mm -hmm. is in eternity. But that human time of lifetime, what you call lifetime, is actually mm -hmm. a piece of eternity. From the generations yes. that were there, from the time of Abraham, Moses, all the way up to the time that we are living in here, we are mm -hmm. still in a strife of eternity. And God mm -hmm. had already planned your purpose before you are born. That means you don't mm -hmm. give yourself purpose you actually discover it. It is not something you give yourself. It was already predestined for you before mm -hmm. you are born from the mm -hmm. creation of the world. And that's a scripture. So mm -hmm. that means what we need to be asking ourselves is to discover it. And the earlier you discover, the more better and effective and fulfilled life you are able to live. Now, that uh, means, still talking about design, any product of design, I call it created order, can only achieve its highest form of potential if it is aligned to the initial conditions. Mother, you are born fully packaged with everything. The skin, wow. the, what you call the, the potential, the, mm -hmm. the power, the authority, mm -hmm. all those things are within you. You just need to activate them. The purpose mm -hmm. is already hidden because if, if I am a, a king in Kenya, we don't have mm -hmm. kings here, and I want to send you as an ambassador in Congo, Mm -hmm. If I'm the one sending you to Congo, I provide mm -hmm. for you all what you need. I'll pay for you the freight. Mm -hmm. I'll give you security guards. I will mm -hmm. make sure you provided what you're going to eat, where you're going to stay. Now, mm -hmm. if God called us here for a reason, why mm -hmm. do we struggle fighting and earning a living? That's one of the deception of the devil, that we are mm -hmm. here to earn a living. We call it survival. Do you know where the survival has come from? Some mm -hmm. philosophies that we have learned in school, and I'll quote one of them, Maslow hierarchy of needs. Everybody mm -hmm. who does management, you're told about Maslow hierarchy, and we like quoting it. But that's a yes. heresy. Why? When you mm -hmm. say that your first natural response to life is survival, there's mm -hmm. no difference between you and an animal and a cat. Even a cat is surviving. Mm -hmm. That is putting us the same level with a cat. And then they are telling you, that then from there you can go psychological, physiological needs, then all the way up to what you call self-actualization. That's a lie because mm -hmm. you are already born complete. So mm -hmm. what you need to do is to discover that completeness early enough and then start leveraging it over a period of time. 
So you are mm-hmm. not born to start self-actualizing when you're 60 years. I found people who, when they are retiring, is only thinking about their purpose. That's a lie. Mm-hmm. They have lived a lie. I've seen people saying they want to go and serve community when they are retiring. Why did you not serve community when you were 20 years? If that was your purpose. And mm-hmm. it's because of the deception that you try to help pursue everything else, you self-actualize mm-hmm. when you're 60 years. That's an enemy of purpose. Number two, mm-hmm. impact led to feel life means integration mm-hmm. of a sense of coherence among all dimensions of one's life. So in your life, mm-hmm. you have all components of your life, whether it's relationships, your mind, your soul, your spirit. Only when there is a balance with and coherence and consistency of relationship between all those components of life, spiritually, mm-hmm. the soul, and also your physical, only when there's that integration and order that you mm-hmm. get fulfilled. Now, purpose dimensions. Wow. We have various purpose dimensions. Number one is something we call universal purpose. Creation was created for a reason. We call mm-hmm. that universal purpose. We also have the purpose for human beings. All human beings have a purpose. You are born for something, to do something mm-hmm. in life. Then we have something called generational purpose. We are in the 21st century. There is a generational purpose because of the time and age that we are living in. And then mm-hmm. we have individual purpose. Just to describe, the universal purpose is the reason for the entire creation, including the rocks, including the microbiome, you know, the bacteria and the viruses and the, mm-hmm. and the fungi and the, and the animals and the trees. They all have a certain sense of purpose in a way. And that's why we have to feed. Mm-hmm. The world is an agod. That's why when you have a problem, you eat some herbs and you get healed. Why? Mm-hmm. That herb was meant for that purpose. Okay. Mm-hmm. That, that's it because it's a universal purpose. So the mm-hmm. whole creation was created by God with a unique purpose. But then also mm-hmm. humanity has a, gener- a general purpose for mankind. And that's, of course, people talk about glorifying God and all that. And also to mm-hmm. work. In Genesis 2, man was created to work and, of course, uh, have the relationship with God and all that. Now, when I ask mm-hmm. people, sometimes I'll ask them, what is your purpose? And people will tell me it's to glorify God. Mother, mm-hmm. that is wrong. Every <laughs> human is human is to glorify God, including the birds. Even mm-hmm. birds glorify God. Yes. So, but there's a specific purpose of mother mm-hmm. that is not in mm-hmm. Kamau or in George. Mm-hmm. But there's what you call the general purpose, like yeah. witnessing, for example. Especially for believers, they'll tell you, my purpose is to reach out to people and win yeah. souls. Who should not mm-hmm. win souls? Everybody should win souls. That's, that's a general mm-hmm. purpose. And this is where yes. makes most people get lost because when you tell them to define their purpose, they mm-hmm. tell you a general purpose which everybody else should be doing. So mm-hmm. we also have what you call generational purpose. We are in 21st century, and I'll tell you, you monitor time. Uh, mm-hmm. In the Bible, it tells about the children of Issachar who understood their time. What does that mm-hmm. mean? That was a generational mm-hmm. purpose. They understood what mm-hmm. their generation was meant to do. Even mm-hmm. in science, how comes in the 17th century is when we have all the greatest scientists we ever have ever read from Galileo, mm-hmm. from Fernand, mm-hmm. Ferdinand, from Isaac Newton? All of them imagine one generation somewhere in 17th century. Why? It's because that time God was pouring out his wisdom on men to be creative. So that was a generation purpose, and that was a, we call it scientific revolution. It was a purpose in the divine order of God because God needed mm-hmm. that to come or to manifest in the universe. Mm-hmm. However, mm-hmm. at the end of the day, you have mm-hmm. a purpose as an individual. Now, this mm-hmm. is where most people now do not focus on. They focus mm-hmm. on anything else because, as you know, a universal purpose is to glorify God. General purpose mm-hmm. of human being, of course, is to be able to be redemptive and to kind of um, glorify God also and kind of also reach out to others, you know, that bit, mm-hmm. and, and be a gift to each other. But question is, what is that purpose for you as George, as Anne, as Mary, as an individual? That's where this conversation now is heading to. We have to understand that. Let me give you something else. I'm still dealing with the issue of design and creativity of wow. God first, and then we can see how it applies to us. Now, do you know flowers who are not meant for beauty? Flowers who are not created for beauty. However, as human beings, we are deceived and we see beauty. When I study mm-hmm. much more the flowers, I discovered it has mm-hmm. more purpose than that beauty. Another question is, why do you have eyes in front and the eyes mm-hmm. are not on the side and on the back? Sometimes <laughs> we don't spend time to think even how we are created, how we are created. That mm-hmm. design of creation carries your purpose. Mm-hmm. Even how your heart has what you call opposable thumb. Your thumb is directly opposite the other four fingers. Mm-hmm. You never questioned that. 
and that mm -hmm. carries some sense of a functionality in you as a human being. Now let's mm -hmm. go back to the flowers. Do you know there are some insects that are only attracted to specific flowers because of their color? Yeah. Mm -hmm. When study the plant uh, science and all those, mm -hmm. you actually discover also a flower carries some ecosystem. There are some insects, yeah. microorganisms that you can't even see with your eyes that actually mm -hmm. are only habitating that yellow flower, and you won't mm -hmm. find it in a pink flower. That means that yellow flower is a universe for some mm -hmm. organism. And mm -hmm. without that, we cannot survive. Now, if a flower has such kind of a purpose that it is already <laughs> redemptive such that if there is no that flower, that insect will die because it will have no place to go. What about mm -hmm. a human being? This is a seriousness of purpose. If mm -hmm. that flower can cause disaster for the insects, what about mm -hmm. a human being living without a purpose? Mm -hmm. Now, when you talk about the eyes in front, do you know what? Bible tells us, of course, that we are supposed to dominate. Mm -hmm. The eyes in front means we are predatory eyes. We call them predatory mm -hmm. eyes. Means mm -hmm. we are predators. That's why we have foresight. Mm -hmm. You may notice mm -hmm. all plays like uh, you know, like cows and like you know, animals that are more uh, prey. Their eyes mm -hmm. are on the side, mm -hmm. so they have to keep looking at the enemy. Our mm -hmm. eyes are in front. We are not interested with the enemy. You know, we glorify sometimes the enemy so much. The way we are even created, our eyes are in front just to see the focus of purpose, not mm -hmm. in the side where we are looking for where the enemy is coming from. It's by design mm -hmm. by itself. We are predatory because we have a foresight. We should be more forward looking. Now, mm -hmm. again, we have a grip so that we can grip, we can hold. That's why we're able to feed our mm -hmm. babies and work with our heart, and we can mm -hmm. actually dominate. If you see what the human being has done so far in the whole universe, it is because mm -hmm. of some of these simple orders of design or simple mm -hmm. orders of creation. But most mm -hmm. of the times, we have not spent time to question the mystery of design and creativity that God has already endorsed on us. Mm -hmm. Now, with that, then let me talk about individual redemptive purpose in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. because you don't have a lot of time. Mm -hmm. Now, redemptive purpose mean that if you don't pursue that purpose, the gap mm -hmm. remains in the market, meaning that mm -hmm. if you don't do it, it actually can cost life to other people. Uh, if that's why we say that purpose, for example, if Nelson Mandela never fought for liberation, do you know what will happen? Millions of South Africans will have been dead by now. So mother uh, failure to kind of pursue your purpose, there are even mm -hmm. people who might lose life just because of you or your disobedience. Well, that's how that is sad. purpose is. There are mm -hmm. people in prison who are not supposed to be in prison because somebody has disobeyed their purpose. There are people who have committed suicide because there's somebody who was supposed to have given them encouragement and because mm -hmm. of your comfort zone, you never gave them encouragement, they are now committed suicide. There are people in depression, uh, again, because of mm -hmm. somebody who have disobeyed and they are not fulfilling their purpose because life mm -hmm. is redemptive. That's mm -hmm. where the word redemptive comes. Now, why do we need purpose? Number one, it will improve mm -hmm. your mental health. Research are people mm -hmm. who are on purpose, they have mm -hmm. no depression. Currently, mm -hmm. we are told that one out of eight four people have mental health issues. I mean, mm -hmm. out of a hundred people, like more than 40 people out of a hundred, they have mm -hmm. depression or de predisposed to mental health. People mm -hmm. who are on purpose, they layer it, they will never have because they are doing what they are meant to do. Sometimes being displaced from your purpose make you unfulfilled. And because of unfulfillment, even if you have a nice job, I have seen mm -hmm. people resigning and they'll tell me, Gabriel, I'm resigning from a, a job which is not even a director job. And I ask them, where are you going? They tell me, nowhere. Mm -hmm. I want first of all to take a career break. I have interacted with so many people like that. Why? The job is not giving them fulfillment. They have all the money. They, they, mm -hmm. they cannot even probably exist for now. So mm -hmm. if you want to improve your mental health, Kindly mm -hmm. pursue your purpose. Number two, it will make your life more happier and fulfilled. Number three, mm -hmm. of course, which is quite what I've mentioned, all your gifts are fully utilized. Now, mm -hmm. we talk about talent, but let me talk about gifts here. And in my purpose coaching classes, we usually talk about gifts and these assessments we do. You literally do assessment you're able to discover your top five strong gifts. Now, your gifts were investments that God endowed in you to fulfill mm -hmm. his purpose. So mm -hmm. gift is what makes God a sponsor. 
I know we like using the word sponsor. Now, God is actually the greatest sponsor. He sponsored mm -hmm. your purpose through your gifting. Mm -hmm. So if you check your gift, if you are not using all your gift in what you're doing currently, you are not on your purpose. If you want to test whether you're fulfilling your purpose, take a list mm -hmm. of the top five gifts. If you are not using all of them concurrently, simultaneously, you are misplaced. Mm -hmm. Wow. I experienced that myself in all my corporate life over 13 years. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I could say I'm only using two of my gifts, but I was mm -hmm. not using the three of the other gifts because I have around five gifts. So wow. the only time you find all your gifts make sense, all of them at a go is when mm -hmm. you're pursuing your purpose, all of them. Mm -hmm. When you find people to inside the hustles, in fact, the other indicator of you not being on purpose is when you find mm -hmm. people inside side hustle jobs or side hustle things. Why mm -hmm. you are doing that side hustle thing? Because what you are doing full time is not mm -hmm. your purpose then. That's why you have to look for another alternative to dispense mm -hmm. your gifts because your gifts are not fully utilized where you are. You have to look for another place to fulfill mm -hmm. them. That's a clear indicator that you're not where you are fully in line to your purpose. Mm -hmm. Improved engagement. I usually say when your purpose, you don't require a boss. You don't require a job description. You can mm -hmm. lead yourself. Your engagement and productivity become very high. When I see managers mm -hmm. complaining about poor performance, I tell them, focus your employees on purpose and they will give you the best performance that you have never mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. found. It mm -hmm. also leave you generational legacy. It leaves beyond you. Mm -hmm. It avoids wasteful investment. I have found people doing their third master's degree their second mm -hmm. PhD, which is wasteful, mm -hmm. yet they can still find fulfillment in what they're doing. Uh, Health so relationship. Sad. When you're on purpose, you mm -hmm. know you're not expecting from other people. It's you who is giving. Purpose mm -hmm. red people are giving. They are the one who owe. Remember I talked about purpose debt. When you're mm -hmm. on purpose, you are the one who owe the world. You know what that means? It means mm -hmm. when you relate with other people, you are looking for an opportunity to impact them, not what mm -hmm. you expect from them. Why people mm -hmm. have bad relationship is because of expectations. I'm expecting mm -hmm. you'll come to my wedding. I'm expecting you'll come to my bridal shower or whatever. Mm -hmm. Those expectations. In purpose mm -hmm. conversation, it's what you you owe, not what you get from others. And therefore, mm -hmm. you are able to actually partner and collaborate with others when you're on purpose. Mm -hmm. It also be as research shows in 2021, even organizations and businesses that are purpose led, they were able to be resilient in terms of disruption. Like COVID, mm -hmm. only people and also business that were purpose led were mm -hmm. able to be resilient enough. They were barely affected during COVID because you can never be invalidated on your purpose by a COVID, mm -hmm. by a virus. Virus cannot invalidate your purpose. It cannot end a huge job rest. But mm -hmm. if you are not on purpose, it is very easy to be disrupted and lose jobs, mm -hmm. opportunities, and all. Finally, it's redemptive in other people's life and also in the planet, meaning you impact the world, you impact other people, and without you, there's a gap. That's what we are saying. Redemptive mm -hmm. means without you, people are going to suffer. Without Christ giving salvation, the humanity mm -hmm. will still have been condemned with sin. Mm -hmm. So he came, and Christ himself was redemptive. That's why we call him a redeemer. However, mm -hmm. because we are also seated in him, highly, you know, on the high places, mm -hmm. we share that attitude. We are also redemptive. That's mm -hmm. why if you look at most of my posts, I keep telling people, you are redemptive. I am redemptive. Mm -hmm. That, Like, for example, Nelson Mandela, if he never did his purpose, even today, mm -hmm. many people will be dying daily because of apartheid in South Africa. That's yes. the seriousness of purpose. Now, people ask me then, how do I discover purpose? I tell them, yes. One, there's something we call a purpose map. And mm -hmm. a purpose map is just a way of reasoning on how you reason out. You always mm -hmm. start with what you call convictions of a need in the space mm -hmm. and the humanity. Mm -hmm. Now, that need could be maybe you watch news and then you discover, wow, people, people are doing abortions. So I hate abortions and something burning inside you and you have strong mm -hmm. convictions. No, we should fight abortion. Or you see mm -hmm. people corruption, you know, corrupting and you kind of something, you know, burns in you and you have this sense of, I need to fight corruption. So you start with a need first in terms of strong convictions of a certain need in either people, space, or planet. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, from there, you have to ask yourself, who do I impact? Mm -hmm. And this could be people who be like Nelson, uh, whatever, like uh, Professor Wagari Mazai did not impact rocks. She impacts mm -hmm. meditation. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. but green belt. So mm-hmm. she had a very well cut out. Here I want to say this. You are not born to save the entire world. I tell mm-hmm. people even sometimes in my purpose coaching, even Christ himself says what? For whosoever believes. That means mm-hmm. even if he died for humanity, mm-hmm. he's actually not the entire humanity. It's who believes. So if you choose not to believe, you cannot be saved. So you mm-hmm. are not born. I have found people trying to carry the whole world in their shoulders. Like mm-hmm. I want to eradicate poverty in the whole world. You can never do that. You are called for a specific niche. Niche means I myself I am called to specific niche of people. Not everybody. Mm-hmm. Sometimes mm-hmm. I am invited to places to talk about and I say, no, I don't think I'm called for you. That's not a space that I'm called for. Because I have my uh-huh. own niche. So you are mm-hmm. not called for it. Everybody. You cannot save mm-hmm. everybody. If you are mm-hmm. called to empower people financially, you cannot empower people financially the whole world. Eight billion people. Mm-hmm. Never. There will be a specific, maybe you say, I'll be called for youth, for single women. I, I mm-hmm. met a gentleman who told me he's, just his purpose is called for house girls who have children. Very specific. Yeah. House mm-hmm. girls who have children because he saw them suffer where mm-hmm. they are looking for jobs Yet mm-hmm. they have their children, they have to leave their children with their parents, with their mm-hmm. sisters or siblings and all that. And that becomes a problem for them. So somebody mm-hmm. conceive a burden, I need mm-hmm. to create something that will empower these house girls who have children. Mm-hmm. So if you are a house girl and you don't have a child, you are not a client, you are not his client. You wow. want only those who have children. That we call mm-hmm. that a niche. Many people have generalization. You are not called for mm-hmm. everybody. You are called mm-hmm. for a specific uh, market subset of the market. Then from mm-hmm. there, you ask yourself, how do you impact those people? How mm-hmm. do you impact those spaces? We mm-hmm. call that the mandate. This is what people call the mission, the mission statement. How do you impact them? Then finally, is how do they change? So if I impact you, how do you change and transform? Mm-hmm. Now, I'll give you a little bit of my story here because this is where sometimes people get confused between what you do, the mandate, and the mm-hmm. model you use. In mm-hmm. the early stage of my discovery, people used to tell me I'm a person who gives bigger picture. So when I mm-hmm. go and talk to a person who ran a kiosk, they'll tell me I've made them see a supermarket inside a kiosk. Mm-hmm. Wow. I'll come and talk, you tell me about a very small idea, I'll amplify it. So people will tell me, wow. you, you kind of help us see the bigger picture. Mm-hmm. Another set of people will tell me that uh, I used to be a man of peace, meaning I'll find people mm-hmm. who are in, in consideration issues leadership drift and I'll bring them together. Mm-hmm. I'll be that man of peace who will bring people who are fighting and they mm-hmm. stop fighting and kind of reconcile. So they tell mm-hmm. me you are kind of a man of peace. So in my early stage of purpose, which is more than 10 years, I used to mistake mm-hmm. that that's purpose. That's what people are mm-hmm. seeing. They are seeing me making things look big. I can amplify mm-hmm. your idea. And that's why I even do strategy, for example, I'm a strategy consultant because I can help you know execute a plan, plan and even execute mm-hmm. it. Mm -hmm. But that's not the purpose. When I started now challenging how do these people change and transform is when I discovered Mm -hmm. actually changing their mindset. So when later I'll ask these people, how did I make you see the bigger picture from a kiosk to see a supermarket? They Mm -hmm. would actually say, you know, you made see things differently. So what Mm -hmm. I'm dispensing to you is actually that transformation of seeing Mm -hmm. things differently. That's me as Gabriel. Mm -hmm. That's what you find in all my platforms. You know, mm-hmm. my channel, you will not miss the word transform somewhere. Because wow. my call is actually transforming the mindset. That transformation mm-hmm. of the mindset is my call. So mm-hmm. if I'm able to make you see things different, I'm sure when you watch this video along the way, you start seeing things different. That's my calling. Mm-hmm. So for me, it's not to motivate you. I'm not a motivational speaker. Maybe God has given other people to motivate people. I don't motivate people. In fact, I give hard to make people angry. People, I mm-hmm. talk to them and they feel so angry. But that's my cause because I have to make you uncomfortable so that mm-hmm. you focus on where you are born. So mm-hmm. I'm not meant to encourage. I'm not meant to motivate people. That's not my calling. Mm-hmm. That's not mm-hmm. my purpose. So mm-hmm. how do change, people change and transform? Then the last one is how do you multiply and sustain impact? This whole journey mm-hmm. is a journey mm-hmm. of transformation. So mm-hmm. by the time you start pursuing your purpose, you discover you mm-hmm. as an individual, you start mm-hmm. transforming. Remember we say Purpose is the becoming, the human being, the being. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. if God wants to use you to become the hope dispenser, you dispense hope. He has to qualify mm-hmm. you to become the hope first. Now, to become mm-hmm. the hope, 
there will be a journey of transformation within you so that you become mm -hmm. that hope, then you be mm -hmm. seeing that hope. And that's why we call it the power of becoming, which is redemptive. Now, wow. um, I know there's something people call it ikigai. The ikigai is a Japanese word that is also the same thing as meaning or purpose, mm -hmm. Japanese word. I'm mm -hmm. trying to use this in their purpose discovery, but I want to give a disclaimer. It's a nice tool, but does not give you a purpose, not necessarily, but it can mm -hmm. give you some triggers or some pointers. There's what mm -hmm. you love, there's what the world needs, mm -hmm. there's what you can be paid for, and there's what mm -hmm. you are good at. Now, mm -hmm. the intersection between what you love and what you are good at, we call it passion. The intersection mm -hmm. between what you love and what the world needs, we call it mission. The intersection mm -hmm. between what the world needs and what you can be paid for, you can get a job mm -hmm. and paid for, you call it a profession. And then mm -hmm. what you can be paid for, and wow. you are good at it, you call it profession. Now, mm -hmm. apparently, most of us start our life in profession and vocation. Most of us. Not necessarily on mission and the passion, not necessarily. However, mm -hmm. I want to say here that your passion is not your purpose. And I know when I say this, I become very controversial because we have many motivational speakers who keep telling us, <laughs> pursue your passion. And I usually tell them a simple question. Show mm -hmm. me one character in the Bible who mm -hmm. loved what they wanted, what they were supposed to do. Did the Moses love taking the children of Israel from Israel? No. <laughs> it was not even his choice because the purpose was not his. It's God's purpose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, even Abraham, nobody really loved in the beginning, Akina Jonah was running away from going mm -hmm. to the I mean, it was not a rose, a, a, a silver plate. However, mm -hmm. I want to give a disclaimer that when you start pursuing purpose mm -hmm. and you power it with what you call vision, passion mm -hmm. is generated. Mm -hmm. Now, that's a deception that we have kind of not, you know, been exposed wow repeat past. that again repeat that again i'm sure people would love to hear that I, again exactly mm -hmm. passion is generated through visioning that's a paraphrased way mm -hmm. of saying it again passion mm -hmm. is generated through visioning mm -hmm. in the beginning let me give you uh, my own experience in the beginning i do purpose coaching can i tell you i never mm -hmm. liked it in the beginning why i'm a data scientist i'm a mathematician mm -hmm. I hated speaking to people. In fact, wow. people who knew me 15 years ago, no, 20 years ago, mm -hmm. and they come and find me this channel, they will tell mm -hmm. you that is not Gabriel. We never met Gabriel who was speaking. Why? I was wow. a hard person, kind of stereo introvert, who was mm -hmm. scientific. I had a scientific mind. And for mm -hmm. me, I wanted only to interact with the numbers. Give me technology mm -hmm. and numbers. Mm -hmm. Now, God is telling me, Gabriel, you'll be a purpose coach. Now, mm -hmm. look at that journey. Mm -hmm. Coming from a mathematician who only interacts with the numbers and computer and, you know, mm -hmm. coding and programming. Now you mm -hmm. tell me I'll be speaking to people, coaching people, listening mm -hmm. to people. That was not me. However, mm -hmm. the moment I discovered the purpose and then I did a vision, I have my own vision. When mm -hmm. I started kind of visioning my journey, automatically mm -hmm. energy started being kind of activated within me. Today, mm -hmm. I do this naturally for free. I wow. speak to organizations for free. There are even people I coach for free as much as I also charge it, of course. But mm -hmm. I have passion. Nothing mm -hmm. can stop me doing what I'm doing. I excite. I'm excited for doing it. So, But mm -hmm. it didn't come naturally. No. I ignited energy because passion is energy. It comes mm -hmm. mostly from visioning. Mm -hmm. so, so that is, we call this Ikigai, and it has some few perspectives. If mm -hmm. you pursue passion and profession, you feel satisfied, but you feel valueless. If you pursue mm -hmm. mission and uh, papa, passion, you feel kind of, yes, you have done much, you are delighted, but there is no wealth. These are people who say they are dying matter. I don't believe that we are mm -hmm. supposed to pursue purpose and then become poopers. You know, the people who say mm -hmm. that purpose, you can die poor. Blessed are the poor. It is says poor in heart, not poor in spirit, sorry. <laughs> not poor material. You should live a decent life because you are a witness of God. People should see you and they see the glory of God. Mm -hmm. So people who say they are pursuing purpose and then they kind of are so, they, they think that dying poor, it, it, it's kind of a justification for purpose. No. But I will mm -hmm. tell you the definition of wealth. Mm -hmm. Wealth is the mm -hmm. resource that uh, multiply impact. So we need wealth to multiply impact. 
Mm-hmm. That's why Wakarimatha, even after death, his, her Green Belt movement still attracts mm-hmm. Fadin. Why? That wealth mm-hmm. there continues sustaining impact long after you are dying. You're dead. Mm-hmm. So we need wealth. But the wealth is not for our selfish gain. Wealth should mm-hmm. be for multiplying impact. That's a new definition for wealth. Mm-hmm. Um, then, of course, if you pursue mission and vocation, you feel excited, but a bit of sense of uncertainty. You even fear mm-hmm. losing a job when you hear there's a retrenchment. Then, of course, mm-hmm. when you're pursuing mission and profession, you feel comfortable, but you feel empty at the end of mm-hmm. it. Now, mm-hmm. the Ikigai model, which is a Japanese, tell us that intersection in between there mostly mm-hmm. is your meaning. It's the Ikigai. So, and I, I support it. When you discover your purpose, you discover that it, inside the purpose is something you love. Mm-hmm. That purpose is redemptive, meaning there's a, a, the world needs it. If you're doing mm-hmm. something the world does not need, that's not your purpose. Mm-hmm. Inside there, you can be paid for it. That means you can earn a living. You, you said mm-hmm. in the beginning that, of course, you don't chase money, you pursue purpose, and money will come. Because that purpose, mm-hmm. actually, you can be paid for. I'm paid mm-hmm. to speak. I'm paid to coach. I'm paid to train. And mm-hmm. also, I'm good at it because I perfected it now over a period of time, and therefore, I'm good mm-hmm. at what I do. So that's mm-hmm. the intersection. If you don't fight this balance, it's kind of mm-hmm. a problem. It doesn't mean that you start at the center. Mostly when you're starting your career, if you, unless you have a coach, a purpose coach are enough in your <laughs> early stage of your career. You always start by profession, vocation, and you might go through maneuvering all those cycles before you mm-hmm. get the right position. Now, quickly, people will ask me now, give me some pointers to uh, kind of how to get my purpose. I mm-hmm. can assure you this, points I'm going to give you here can give you a direction of discovering your purpose. Number one, mm-hmm. and adding prayerful convictions mm-hmm. and persuasion that never leaves you. But more importantly, mm-hmm. convictions that activate you. Mm-hmm. And I want to give the story of Moses. Moses, mm-hmm. when he was in the wilderness uh, and, and he saw an Egyptian, you know, torturing mm-hmm. a Jew. Mm-hmm. And he felt so bitter and angry. And mm-hmm. out of it, he actually went and killed that Egyptian. Mm-hmm. What was driving? What was activating Moses? Remember this time, Moses had not gone to the burning bush. Mm-hmm. Hope you get that. Moses had not gone to the call, where we can call it the burning bush experience. Not yet. When he was still mm-hmm. not yet in the mm-hmm. burning bush. So mm-hmm. He did not start his purpose at the burning bush. That was the mm-hmm. affirmation where God now clowned it. It started before he could see the Israelites being tortured, being put as slavery, and he mm-hmm. was angry about it. And he had convictions. No, I need mm-hmm. to fight. I need to redeem. Remember, we talk about redemptive. I need to yeah. redeem the children of Israel from mm-hmm. this bondage of slavery from the Egyptians. So convictions mm-hmm. activate you. Question is, we have people who live with no convictions. If somebody asks you, what activates you? People can tell you, yeah. can't tell you. Personally, maybe in, uh, if you follow me in other channels when I talk about my own papa's journey, mm-hmm. I, I have five strong convictions that activate mm-hmm. me and they make me do what I do. One mm-hmm. of the convictions for me is that I believe something that is born must grow. I hate mm-hmm. stagnation. It's a condition mm-hmm. in me. If I come and I, you tell me you are running a kiosk today, then mm-hmm. I meet you another five years and I see the same kiosk that has not evolved. Let me tell you, I feel nausea. I feel <laughs> nauseated. If you are still, if I found you are a manager, I meet you three years down the line, you are still a manager. I feel mm-hmm. nausea. Because mm-hmm. strong within me, I have a conviction that mm-hmm. actually people need to grow. You need to grow. Businesses need to grow. It's a conviction within me and I don't force it. It's natural within me. And I have five such convictions. And when I look at them, they actually are the basis in which I do all what I do. So we start with the convictions. So question is, what are your convictions? Convictions need to be established from the word of God, from the truth, from the from, from mm-hmm. the truth, which is the knowledge of the word of God. Number two, mm-hmm. Horianga. You mm-hmm. feel angry when Wangare Madai could see, you know, forest being uh, mm-hmm. approached and people... Uh, building estates there and all that, she got mm-hmm. some hori anger. That mm-hmm. anger is a papa's voice trying to speak out itself. It's trying to tell you, give me life. I want to pursue this. You know, mm-hmm. that anger, if you go and watch news and something makes you angry, what you do yourself, you question, why did I feel that angry? Why did I mm-hmm. feel discontented? If you are treated badly and you feel bad or anger, 
Don't focus on who is doing that because most of we stage fights and start fighting each other or fight your mm -hmm. boss. No, question mm -hmm. why you're feeling that feeling. You find mm -hmm. inside there, there's a voice of purpose calling you. Mm -hmm. The only thing we don't do, we don't journal, we don't journal our life. If you journal mm -hmm. your life, you discover there's a pattern. What gives mm -hmm. you an an unexplainable fulfillment? Have you ever mm -hmm. gone one day at night uh, retiring for the day and you felt like, God, you can take my life? Is that <laughs> one, is that one day you thought mm -hmm. one day you go home and you feel so fulfilled that you can tell mm -hmm. God, take my life. That I is a that. voice of purpose telling you you have started bearing my me fruits and you need to do more of that. So maybe mm -hmm. you organize a chama meeting or a church or gathering and all that, but you need to question what mm -hmm. made me get fulfilled? What is that mm -hmm. that made me fulfilled? Mm -hmm. It's not an event. For example, you may gather your family together. That may not be the purpose. Question mm -hmm. yourself. Maybe you got excited or fulfilled because you saw people who are not, um, you know, sharing with each other or are not connected with each other. Mm -hmm. Now they are connected. That means you are a reconciler probably. So it's a reconciliation mm -hmm. that made you fulfilled not the partying mm -hmm. and the goat eating and the parties that you had not. So you judge not from the event itself, but question further. Try to mm -hmm. probe. It's like the onion. Try to remove those peel of the onion until mm -hmm. you find that kahoy thing where you're able to question, why did I get that fulfillment? Mm -hmm. Meditational realities. Mother, mm -hmm. I must tell you, we also live in a world where we need to connect with our meditational reality. And this is especially for people who are Christians or they are mm -hmm. believers. We mm -hmm. all have to connect with our spiritual world through meditation. Mm -hmm. When you meditate, there's some reality that God paint an image. It could come mm -hmm. to you in form of a dream. It could mm -hmm. come to you in form of a vision, a godly vision. I don't mean our own illusional visions, no. Mm -hmm. dreams. A godly mm -hmm. vision may be downloaded on you when you're in meditation. Mm -hmm. Tied to this is something we call prophetic instruction. Mostly mm -hmm. God may also said prophetic instruction to you as mother. And he mm -hmm. has done that from the past. There are people mm -hmm. where he will call them through in dreams, but there are mm -hmm. those people who he will bring them into, he said a prophet to go and speak mm -hmm. to them. So they mm -hmm. all, God can speak to anybody anyhow. So there are all those mm -hmm. meditational realities, prophetic instruction, it is possible. So that's mm -hmm. possible. You only need to journal your life and take an account. Number five is spiritual endowment. If you take the gifts that you have, and then you ask yourself, these gifts, where should mm -hmm. they be fulfilled all of them together? Now, I'll mm -hmm. give you a warning here. Gifts do not give you a direction. Mm -hmm. Knowing your gift alone does not give you the purpose because mm -hmm. gifts can be abused. Why? You may have an artistry gift of singing, but you can choose to sing secular music or abusive songs. Mm -hmm. You are still using your gift. In fact, even people who are doing bad things, uh, pornography, um, people yeah. who are doing even terrorism, they are mm -hmm. literally using their gifts, but in the mm -hmm. long way. Because gifts mm -hmm. do not tell you the direction. They only mm -hmm. give you a potential. Mm -hmm. But if you're intentional, you find there is that place. Remember in the book of Ephesians 2.10 that we read first, it talks about that God has created us in Christ to do good things. Good things. That means not bad things. So mm -hmm. gifts should be used to do good things. And that's the purpose. Mm -hmm. And finally, if Put in all the lessons you have learned from pain. Mm -hmm. Journal you arrived today. Take a journal. Journal all the pains you have gone through. Where mm -hmm. it, it could be a pain of somebody let you down. You got mm -hmm. fired from a job. Your business was optioned. All those mm -hmm. painful moments in your life. Journal them. Then you question what lessons can you draw from them. You will always find actually that pain was qualifying you for a purpose. But mostly mm -hmm. we, we wear a heart of complaining. Oh, mm -hmm. why am I like this? Why am I like this? When you start complaining and blaming people, you lose mm -hmm. focus on purpose. So if you mm -hmm. journal your life and take mm -hmm. all the pain, painful moments, I can assure you those pain, mostly they will be directing mm -hmm. you to purpose. Now, I usually make a comment here. Pain mm -hmm. is inevitable, mm -hmm. but suffering is a choice. I know that may look quite interesting. Pain, yeah. is, <laughs> pain is inevitable. As long as uh -huh. you're a human being, you uh -huh. are inevitable to pain. You must go uh -huh. through pain. Uh -huh. But suffering as a result of pain, suffering uh -huh. as a result of pain is the choices you make. Uh -huh. So maybe we have that discussion in a separate conversation. But that's the general. Now, <laughs> those who call them internal purpose campus, 
Inside mm-hmm. you, you can journal a purpose that gives you kind of a compass that gives you a direction of your purpose. But mm-hmm. then we have what you call external validation. You can also mm-hmm. validate your purpose externally. Number one, you know, how mm-hmm. do you influence people? Just if you go and speak to people and they tell you, oh, mother, you changed my life. A mm-hmm. question them, how did it change? Don't mm-hmm. just take the glory and keep silent. Go mm-hmm. further and ask them, tell me how I changed you. How did mm-hmm. I transform your life? You'll find that mm-hmm. they are almost pointing to your purpose. Number two, mm-hmm. affirmation and word of mouth from other people, especially fresh connections. I'll mm-hmm. give people an assignment. The last mm-hmm. connection, and I don't mean people you are used to. There are people who you are mm-hmm. used to who you say, Wamekuzoya, leave around those ones. <laughs> people who you have connected the last six months. Mm-hmm. Take an account, people you have linked up with in the last year or six months, I think that's what mm-hmm. I prefer. Then mm-hmm. check what they are saying about you because they are more unbiased because you have just known each other and therefore they will more give you very genuine feedback. People who mm-hmm. have known you for many years, they can pamper you. <laughs> they may not mm-hmm. necessarily tell you. They may tell you what you want to hear because they care about you and all that. But people who you have known yeah. kind of the last six months, they may even give you some very uncomfortable feedback because they have no much attachment there. That's if right. you journal that, you might find a direction towards your purpose. Then finally, environment that keep recurring. Now, there's a person who told me that whenever he goes to a mission in a, in a town, he always mm-hmm. finds himself surrounded by drunkards. Mm-hmm. He doesn't call them. He goes somewhere, he attracts drunkards. He will mm-hmm. always come in, and he has a language for them. And if I don't speak, start speaking to drunkards, they actually almost sober up. What is that? Mm-hmm. And why is not another person? They are not talking to another person, only him. Mm-hmm. It is because mm-hmm. there's something redemptive in this person mm-hmm. that you can't help it. You can't. Mm-hmm. Personally, because now I do purpose coaching, I can almost tell you, I don't struggle looking for people to coach. I always uh-huh. find people who are lost in the direction of their life. It's natural uh-huh. for me. And uh-huh. I don't chase them away. Most of us chase people that are supposed to actually be helping us execute our purpose. We chase them. Mm-hmm. So if you are a person who attracts drunkards, you might say, ah, these are bother and you chase those drunkards. You have mm-hmm. lost your meaning because you, are, you have something for them, but you're chasing mm-hmm. them away. I'll give another example. There's some, somebody told me he journaled all the phone calls he used to receive for a period mm-hmm. of time. He discovered more than mm-hmm. seven out of 10 calls he receives were all mm-hmm. related to money. Uh-huh. He had a financial empowerment purpose. Mm-hmm. He actually journaled anywhere he was going. He was finding people discussing about money, problems mm-hmm. of money, you know, financial, mm-hmm. people are being auctioned, financial mm-hmm. indiscipline. And it's an environment that keeps recurring all the time. Mm-hmm. Most likely, it is pointing you to the direction of purpose. Then, of course, tapping mm-hmm. the generational impact in terms of generational purpose, in terms of divine timing. Our mm-hmm. time right now, as 21st century, has a purpose to deliver. If you have mm-hmm. noted, this purpose conversation is saturating all our media, all our mm-hmm. social media. We're talking about purpose all over. Mm-hmm. It means we have a certain timing where humanity mm-hmm. is kind of now rediscovering, recalibrating mm-hmm. our meaning. So mm-hmm. there's an essence for that. In fact, one of the generational purpose I've already started seeing, I'm still researching around it. The mm-hmm. generation we are living like now is a generation mm-hmm. that is redefining wisdom. Uh-huh. redefining things that we have always believed as true, we have started mm-hmm. questioning them. And I'll tell mm-hmm. you one example. Look at the young generation we have right now. Mm-hmm. If you tell them to go to school, they ask you, why should I go to school? If you tell them to get employed, they ask you, why should I get employed? They, they are questioning don't. everything because mm-hmm. they are trying to tap into a new us. We never questioned everything. We, yeah. we were told to do what we did. Now we have <laughs> a generation where you mm-hmm. question everything because we are doing what? We are rediscovering wisdom. That's why things like the mass row hierarchy of myth, we need to rewrite that row again. We need to invert mm-hmm. that pyramid now because we are discovering <laughs> this thing was 17th century. Where are we living with 17th century wisdom, which is actually mm-hmm. heresy and actually a deception. So people have started now challenging some of the philosophies, some of the mm-hmm. theories that we have already mm-hmm. taught in management classes and our academia. We have started mm-hmm. discovering that those things actually most of them are not true. They were meant to create a working population and employee mm-hmm. mindset. So anyway, we can mm-hmm. talk about that. Now, people who are in business, I would give you this as an example of purpose. Mm-hmm. I met a gentleman who have a boutique in town, Nairobi town. And uh, he told me, Gabriel, um, uh, thank you for coming to my boutique, but I have mm-hmm. nothing to sell to you today. Mm-hmm. I asked him, why are you telling me you have nothing to sell to me? He told me, I don't sell clothes. 
I dress people. And I picked this practically, that this thread I picked it from a practical example of a case that I have interacted with. He told me, mm -hmm. I don't sell clothes, I dress mm -hmm. people. So when mm -hmm. you say you sell clothes, you are transactional. Selling mm -hmm. clothes is transactional. Mm -hmm. Dressing people is redemptive. Mm -hmm. so purpose is redemptive. Who should mm -hmm. not be dressed? Who does not want to be dressed? Everybody wants to be dressed. Totally. I mean, the person who is dressing people, he cannot, mm -hmm. he doesn't even have to market himself so much. If you only know that he is dressing you, let me tell you, the time I spent like one hour in that boutique, he had sold more than 50 suits. When what? other nearby boutiques, other nearby mm -hmm. boutiques were hardly mm -hmm. selling one suit in one hour. Why? What? This guy is not doing business for money. It's not transactional. Mm -hmm. It is redemptive. Mm -hmm. So, for people who are in business, this is how you can actually anchor into what you call purpose red redemptive businesses. Mm -hmm. And I've given you some perspective there. The mindset for the mindset of a transactional business person, the customer mm -hmm. experience about you know sell faster and sell more. But the person mm -hmm. who is a redemptive talking about I want to dress you, it's human centered. The mm -hmm. person who is a transactional in terms of uh, this like opportunity for sustainability, saying as long as there are products to sell. I'll mean business. Now mm -hmm. look at the other side. As long as there are people with a need to be dressed, I am in business. Mm -hmm. Complete mm -hmm. different mindset. That's why I say purpose True. is a transformation journey. You have to change the way you look at things. Mm -hmm. It's a whole paradigm shift by itself. We can talk about that in other. So maybe take away as a wind up. Number one, you're a product of design. That's the key. I think we have already talked about that in several conversations in the past. You are a mm -hmm. product of a design. If mm -hmm. flowers are serving a purpose, what about mm -hmm. you who is even an intelligent human being? You are serving mm -hmm. a higher purpose. Um, mm -hmm. Life is not meant for survival. People are pushing ourselves for survival just to earn a living, to pay bills. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, that's a long, long motivation. We are supposed to be anchored on a purposeful impact. You are not just there to survive. You are not there, you know, to just do things. Purpose is a becoming journey, not a doing thing. Gabriel, just to stop you there, yes. just to highlight to you that in fasting, we emphasize, yes, on the survival phase. It's uh, that place that you are in the last list. You are not meant to be in the last list the whole of your life. Just surviving exactly. as you're, you're describing it. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yes. And, and as, as we said in the beginning, if mm -hmm. God sent you to the universe to pursue a purpose, he already mm -hmm. raised for it. He sponsored you for it. The mm -hmm. other you discover, I don't really work so hard to do mm -hmm. what I do and to get business. And, and I, I think I, I worked for 13 years in the corporate space. And now I'm in now consultancy for almost now seven years. I can assure mm -hmm. you these seven years, I really have not struggled so much. And I wish uh, that's what I was living before. Initially, I was surviving. Why? Because sometimes I took some loans. I had to repay loans. Sometimes you don't want to leave the emperor because you are paying some mortgage and all that. I was surviving. Mm -hmm. or because I have to pay my rent and all that, I have to support my family. I was surviving. Mm -hmm. But I came to discover, do those mm -hmm. needs, have those needs left? I am still oh. paying school fees. I'm still supporting my family, but I'm mm -hmm. not now surviving. I am impacting. By mm -hmm. the impact through the purpose, God mm -hmm. actually caused more breakthrough than all mm -hmm. the combined effort I was spending in my mm -hmm. survival mode. The mm -hmm. challenge is that we kind of start surviving which mm -hmm. every other created me like even animals, they survive. Even mm -hmm. uh, you know, animals in the wilderness, they survive. Mm -hmm. Then we labor our life to be a survival life. That's the problem. So wow. the other thing, of course, purpose is discovered is not self-created. You get mm -hmm. it through prayerful conviction. You discover it. Purpose involves mindset transformation. It's a journey of becoming, and therefore that means transformation. If you're on purpose, there's no retirement. Mother, I have seen one of the heresies in the market. People mm -hmm. saying, I can't wait to retire. What are you retiring mm -hmm. for? It means <laughs> what you are doing was vanity. Mm -hmm. There's no difference between your purpose and life. Purpose is lifetime. Mm -hmm. Until you die is when you say you have exited your purpose zone. That's the mm -hmm. case. So you don't retire at 16 purpose. You don't retire at 70. In fact, even if you discover your purpose and 70 years, it is better. Mm -hmm. 
than if you reached all your life without that purpose. It doesn't matter the quality of the, the number of years you have reached. Jesus mm -hmm. only lived for that three years, but he fulfilled his purpose. Some of us are living 80 years, we are still surviving. Now, um, everything you need to dominate is hardwired with you, within you. You're not looking for it out there. It's already within you. You are born with it. Then purpose mm -hmm. protects you. It galvanizes your future. Mother mm -hmm. usually tells people, if you want to be protected, mm -hmm. if you want to take an insurance cover, life assurance cover, mm -hmm. I have worked in the insurance space for some time, and people mm -hmm. take insurance cover. Can I tell you, as mm -hmm. also a person who have come from the financial services and have done the insurance for several mm -hmm. years, there is mm -hmm. no better life assurance than purpose. Wow. I'll tell you why. If God <laughs> called you to come and pursue something, he will mm -hmm. protect you from any harm until you mm -hmm. do it. Wow. I don't, hope my viewer and the, the viewer can get that right. The God mm -hmm. who sent you to pursue something, if I sent you as an ambassador in Congo, I'm mm -hmm. the one in charge of protecting you. I'll send your bodyguards. I will make sure you're protected. Mm -hmm. when, I, when I discovered my purpose, let me tell you, there are things mm -hmm. that change in my life that I cannot explain. There is mm -hmm. even some protection, very divine things that were happening mm -hmm. before that when mm -hmm. I got into purpose, God generously protects me now because wow. what I'm doing is not mine, it's his. Mm -hmm. So he actually provides you the assurance. Assurance mm -hmm. is not getting the life insurance. Yes, and I know we tell people to take life, life insurance. That's okay. But if mm -hmm. you want to be, have the real, real, authentic life assurance, get mm -hmm. your purpose. God will protect you. Remember mm -hmm. Jesus, whenever the Pharisees who want to kind of hijack and kill him before his time. You remember what was mm -hmm. happening? God actually was hiding him. He was disappearing mysteriously. Why? Yes. It was not yet time for him to die. Mm -hmm. God was protecting Christ, Jesus, until the time he had to fulfill his mandate. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. There is no harm that will befall you if mm -hmm. you have not yet fulfilled your purpose, if you have aligned to it. Why mm -hmm. you suffer is like Jonah. Jonah was called for a mission. He had, he wanted to do his own way. What happened? He landed mm -hmm. the journey. The journey was wrong and now he had to be swallowed by the fish. Mm -hmm. God was still protecting him, but now he's the fish, but it was painful anyway. It was a painful experience. Some of us are going through painful experiences because God has us put us in a fish. It's not mm -hmm. very comfortable to go and mm -hmm. vomit us at the bank of where we want to go and pursue our purpose. So, but mm -hmm. you don't have to wait to be swallowed by a fish to discover your mm -hmm. purpose. You can be intentional and through the act of obedience, you can get your purpose right. As I wind up, question for us to reflect. How many thousands, if not million, are in prison, hospitalized, dead because of your fear, disobedience, comfort zone, ignorance, mediocrity to pursue your redemptive purpose? I want to leave our viewer with this as a serious reflection. And as I discharge my viewer here for this segment, blessed are those people who read Revelation 1-3, who read, who hear, take to heart, and do that which they have heard in this conversation. I want to give you much in order that you go and you can repeat yeah. these statements on yourself as you watch this script that <laughs> I have what it takes to release the human capital dividend. I am redemptive. I will mm -hmm. make it known. I will make it real. I will make it happen. I will make it stick. I hope you have repeated after me. And may God bless you. This is Gabriel Nyamo, your Papa's coach. Wow. Gabriel, that is so feeling. That is so, I don't know even how to describe it. Because how many millions, how many thousand we are working blindly. We don't know what our purpose is. We don't know what great, I mean, God has already put in us what we need to dispense in this world. There are so many people dying and crying because we are not following our purpose. May God help us that we are able to live the abundant life that God has put in me, that I'm able to, to be that abundant. You know, abundant, I don't know how to put it, that God intended me to be. And I am sure by now my fear is crying and yearning. How can I know this purpose or mine, that specific individual? I know I, my viewer, you are encouraged to put it on the chat section, put it in the comment section so that you're able to follow up and get to know. And I'm sure Gabriel, with all that wisdom, 
uh, it's all revealing. I really don't even know how to, to say it. Where can people get you? Where can they get you so that you're able to reveal to them their purpose? All right. Thank, thank you, Mother. And the, thank you for the good work you're doing, helping people first track the abundance of living. Yes, okay. um, you can find me in almost all, me, all social media channels. Um, mm -hmm. In Facebook, I'm Gabriel Nyamo, your purpose coach. On Instagram, mm -hmm. the same Gabriel Nyamo. On LinkedIn, the same Gabriel Nyamo. Actually, I'm very consistent, but I'm also on YouTube, also Gabriel Nyamo, your mm -hmm. purpose coach. If, mm -hmm. if you want to identify between me and another Gabriel Nyambo, you'll always find something around Papa somewhere. You are Papa's coach. Mm -hmm. You can find me there, but also on the comment section on this uh, channel, you're going to put my number just in case you want to reach out to me yes. through WhatsApp. You're very welcome. God bless you. Hey, thank you, and God bless you so much. My viewer, that's all the time we had for. You are encouraged to pursue your purpose. Let the world not suffer anymore because you haven't obeyed your purpose. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much.